It's almost as if we've gone back in time when you had two doors. There is one type of door you go and you get the best out of care. If you have private insurance. If you don't have private insurance, if you have public insurance, Medicaid, or you don't have insurance, then there is another door for you. And so I want to ask Nisha, our lawyer, what are our rights? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Nisha Agarwal. I'm a civil rights attorney with an organization called New York Lawyers for the Public Interest. And many of you may be wondering, what's a lawyer doing on a panel about health care? Well, the reason is, and the reason I'm involved in this fight personally, is because many times people will go to their health care provider, they'll go to the hospital, and they'll experience the kind of treatment that we've heard this morning, and they'll think there's nothing they can do about it. But the fact of the matter is that patients do have rights within our system, and they can advocate for themselves and work with others to ensure that those rights are adhered to by the hospitals. So I want to tell you about two specific sets of laws that will be important for you all to know about as you move on from today's discussion. The first is that throughout New York State, all patients have what's called a patient's bill of rights. This patient's bill of rights provides a lot of protections for patients, and I think there might even be copies of them in your, in your tote bag. You should take a look at this sometime and really read all of the different rights that you have. There are things like the right to considerate and respectful treatment by your healthcare provider. Vanessa definitely didn't get that when she went to the hospital, but that was her right. There's also the right to knowledge of your diagnosis. Your physician cannot tell you to just get a hobby or to eat more roughage. They have to tell you what's wrong with you. And perhaps most importantly for what we've been discussing so far today, Providers are not allowed to discriminate against you based on your source of payment, which means they cannot provide you, fail to provide you with care because of the type of insurance you have, or provide you with a different type of care because of the insurance that you have. That's in the law. That's your right as a patient. Now, clearly, healthcare providers are not following these laws. So what can you do? Well, the first thing to know is that as an individual, you have a lot of power to do things in the moment and even after you have a bad experience in the healthcare system. The first thing you can do in the moment is to do what Margie did, to do what Vanessa did, to speak up in that moment and say, I'm not staying here anymore, I'm not taking this, or I want to complain to whoever. And you may think that, oh, it's not going to make a difference, but sometimes it's very important to speak out just so healthcare providers know that this community is not going to take it anymore. Often, I'll hear as a lawyer, oh, you know, they, people don't complain, so nothing's wrong, or those people, they don't complain, everything's fine. But you know everything is not fine, so you have to speak out in that moment. You also should speak out to the right authorities who are supposed to be monitoring these practices. You can write letters to the State Department of Health and say, I feel that my rights under the Patient's Bill of Rights have been violated at this institution. Tell them specifically what happened. Tell them your story. It doesn't have to be very fancy legal writing. You just have to send them a letter. And that puts the State Department of Health on notice that this particular healthcare provider is not following the law. Do what Vanessa did. Write to the managed care company. Write to the insurance company and say, this doctor treated me this way. Why do you have them in your plan? This person shouldn't be part of the insurance program. Get, kick them out. Again, just sending a letter. So those are things you can do as an individual. And you should tell other folks in your community about this, too. If you hear that story, tell them, hey, did you know there's a patient bill of rights? You're not supposed to be treated this way. And spread the word to your, to your community. Another important law that I want you to all know about is actually from 1964. It's the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And what it says, basically, is that no organization that gets money from taxpayers, that gets public funding, can discriminate against people based on their race or their ethnicity. And the reason for this is very simple. If you're paying tax dollars to these hospitals and they're treating you poorly, why are they getting that money in the first place? They can't be doing that. So the reason that the Civil Rights Act is important here is because in New York City and New York State, people of color tend to be disproportionately on public insurance and, on, and uninsured. And white people tend to be disproportionately privately insured. 
So when you're mistreating people based on the type of insurance they have, when you're separating people based on the type of insurance they have in the healthcare system, you're creating a de facto segregated system of care based on race and ethnicity. And that is a violation of civil rights laws that people fought for in the civil rights movement and have been around since 1964. And that's happening too. And one of the things we've done with the REACH Coalition, and this is really a community effort to enforce these laws, is to file a complaint with the state attorney general's office and name specific hospitals that have been doing this kind of separation and providing unequal care on a systematic basis. And the attorney general keeps telling us, where are the stories of, these, of this bad care? Where is the, how is the separation of, of healthcare actually affecting people? They, they don't seem to think it's a problem in the community. And until they hear from you, they're not gonna be able to do their job, which is enforce the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and make sure that separate and unequal healthcare simply has no more place in New York City today and into the future. Thank you.